I want to thank everyone for joining us for today's session, the 411 and 211, Helping Patrons Connect to Community Resources. This is the first in a series about 211 New York State. I'm Caitlin Kenny, Engagement and Education Services Coordinator from the Western New York Library Resources Council, and I will be your moderator for today. Before we get started, I'd like to just quickly take care of some housekeeping. I am available to help you with any technical problems during the presentation, including sound, capturing, and CE certificate. We do have captioning available. Um, you can toggle the subtitles on and off by clicking show caption button at the bottom of your screen. You can click it again to turn it off. Please feel free to utilize the chat throughout the webinar for conversation, questions, and assistance. And go ahead and introduce yourselves in the chat now. I know we have some librarians from, librarian from all over, so that's exciting to see. All attendees are expected to follow our code of conduct, and I will put a link to that in the chat. To summarize, please treat all staff, event attendees, and speakers with respect. Those who are not adhering to the code of conduct will be removed from the webinar. We are recording today's webinar, and I will share the recording when it is available via email. During the Q&A portion, you may ask questions out loud, but keep in mind that you are being recorded and the recording is being distributed to your colleagues. If you are uncomfortable with this, you may submit your question via the chat box, and I will read it aloud for you. Now that I've completed the housekeeping, I'd like to introduce our presenters for today from 211. Um, is Kelly and Lori is a librarian that has worked with 211. Thank you so much and welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks, Caitlin. Um, my name is Kelly Dodd. I'm the director of 211 New York. And with me today is Lori. Lori, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Lori Abadapalo. I'm a coordinator at Middle Country Public Library, which is out on Long Island. And I am also the coordinator for the library's uh, 211 uh, Long Island database, uh, which supports the 211 Long Island call center that is coordinated through um, the United Way of Long Island and also United Way of Hudson Valley. Great. Thanks, Lori. Um, so I thought it would be extremely helpful to have Lori here with me as we uh, talked about 211 and how 211 is useful in libraries um, helping patrons connect to services because she has hands on experience with that. Um, all right, so I'm going to share my screen now. Possibly. <laughs> okay. Did that work? Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so feel free to ask questions while we go through the slides. Um, thanks everyone for joining us today. So uh, Lori and I are going to talk a little bit about what 211 is, uh, who 211 benefits, how um, 211's resource databases work. Um, we'll share a little bit about 211 and um, VITA or TCE since it's uh, tax season, and um, how you can use, talk about how you can use 211 to serve your patrons and um, what you can do to help others know about 211. So what is 211? 211 is a three digit phone number that connects people to services in their community. You just dial those three digits, just like 911 or 411, um, and it's answered 24 7. 211 is also a community resource database um, of all the different community services. So that includes nonprofits and government services, um, support groups, things like that. But I think the most important thing to know about 211 is that 211 connects you to a person who's going to listen to you help you problem solve, and help you find help for your specific situation. I think we've all been in situations where we're kind of overwhelmed with our problems or what's going on with us. And that actually kind of limits our cognitive bandwidth. Like it makes it harder for us to problem solve when we're stressed. So it's really important to have someone else who's 
caring and non-judgmental and who can help ask some questions and help you problem solve. So I think that's one of the most important um, aspects of 211. Some of the goals of 211 New York are to provide access to information about health and human services that are available to all New Yorkers. Um, 211 also uh, serves as a tool for helping professionals, um, such as librarians and other health and human service professionals, so that they can help assist their clients access resources outside of their scope of services. And again, 211 creates connections. So um, I think COVID showed us all how important human connection is to our own well being. Um, and 211 really facilitates that connection between individuals in the community and services and programs and people that are going to help them in their time of need. So what kind of services does 211 connect to? A wide variety of community services, A to Z, soup to nuts, everything from, um, you know, connecting to basic needs, to support and security, um, housing, resources, mental health services, substance abuse services, um, recreation programs, kind of a wide gamut of services that are available in a community that someone might need help finding. Uh, 211 is available nationwide. Over 99% of the U.S. population has access to a 211. Um, side note, during the pandemic, Canada made 211 available to 100% of their population. So um, they recognize the importance of 211 for connecting to resources, especially um, COVID vaccines and COVID information and government benefits that were um, becoming available during the pandemic, just like we did here in New York, um, and helping people who maybe had never had to look for help or supports before navigate the complicated social services system that we have in our, our communities. Um, the um, city of Chicago recently became um, active with 211 on January 1st, so that bumped us up from 96% in the United States where we'd been hovering for several years to that 99% of overall coverage. Um, and some of the benefits are something to keep in mind when we're thinking about 211 and its nationwide coverage is that you might be talking to someone who's impacted by something that a family member is going through, and maybe that family member doesn't live locally. They live in California, they live in Florida, they're a snowbird. You can still call 211, and 211 can connect you to the 211 in that community where that family member lives so that you can find access find resources for that family member in their local community. And what does coverage look like in New York State? So 211 is available 24 seven in New York. Um, we have several regional call centers throughout upstate New York and in the Hudson Valley. Um, and we have um, each of them maintain a resource database uh, because <laughs> Because 211 grew up as kind of a patchwork quilt as funding became available in the state, um, we're working on, they're kind of independent, but we're working on supporting connectivity in between the 211s in the state as far as the resource databases go. And I'm going to turn it over to Lori for some resource database for her area of expertise. Okay. Thank you, Kelly. Um, yeah, uh, we became a, a partner with United Way to create the uh, 211 Long Island in 2010. So prior to that, um, we did uh, have a, a resource database that had been in the community for about 25 years. And so um, we were a, a logical partner. If you're wondering how a library became associated with this, uh, uh, project. Um, so, so we had a known resource database and the United Way of Long Island um, didn't want to reinvent the wheel. And so they reached out to us and we partnered with them. So 
Um, I don't think we're the only library in the nation that does this, but we um, are one of a select <laughs> few. Um, most of the resource databases are curated by uh, United Way uh, affiliated 211s. So um, basically the, the database has to meet a national standard and that is uh, through the AIRS, um, which is the Alliance of Information Resource um, Systems, every information and referral systems. And um, it's indexed using the 211 LA County taxonomy. And the taxonomy is simply the subject category as you know, we would know it in the library world. So um, it is a numerical uh, system. So there's a code that's attached to every term. And, um, you know, so it, it would seem a bit uh, similar to like a Dewey Decimal or Library of Congress classification system. Um, and it, it is similar in that way. There are um, a, several levels. And the first level is a very basic, um, you know, term that, that includes um, when you get all the way out to the ends of the, of the, the tree of the taxonomy, it's, it's over 9,000 terms that can cover the complete range of human services. And it serves as a common language between the different 211s, which is why um, if you were to navigate you know, between different 211s, they're gonna be speaking the same language. So they would understand um, this numerical system and what these terms mean, and it makes for consistency and continuity of access and um, is very helpful to you know, the, the call center specialists who you know, can know this code like the back of their hand and they know how to find the resource, um, which makes it much easier for them to find the resources than for a lay person a lot of times. So um, it does meet uh, national standards and um, the Alliance of Information Referral Systems is also the professional membership association for the community. And so you'll find that um, AIRS in, seeks to ensure the delivery of quality INR. So people um, get certification to become practitioners and the programs themselves also become accredited. So it is, it is a very well, um, regulated industry. Now, um, what you'll find in a 211 record is um, it's the agency name, the services that that agency provides, the locations where those services are provided, and you'll find their address, um, phone number, and all of the different information that you would need to know whether or not to direct a person to that service. So would this individual be eligible? Um, and uh, there are also links to websites and Facebook pages so that you can go and, and check it out. And um, the information can also be printed so that you can give it to the patron if you have a patron in front of you who needs this information. So the benefits of 211 are many. It's available 24 seven, um, either through the call center or online. And um, it's a comprehensive database that's made up to date annually. We are required through AIRS to make sure that these um, records are, are updated at least once annually. And so, um, and we also, try to capture all of the resources of a certain, you know, of all types within our region. So um, sometimes people say, well, I could just Google that. Well, you could just Google a specific thing, but when you're Googling, um, you know, for a, a, a set of services, the only place you're really gonna find all of the things that are applicable is if you have a curated database such as 211. So um, it really is, more helpful in getting you the comprehensive services for that need that this person may have. Um, it is keyword search capable and you can limit the search results by zip code so you can get it very targeted to where the person needs it. It is centrally managed either, um, you know, we manage it here at the library, but every 2 one manages their own data. Um, and so 
Um, it avoids duplication of effort um, and uh, it is a, a very useful system for especially service um, providers to use to help their clients. So just to show you some of the impact that 211 has across the state, um, when folks call us, they are, um, calls are confidential and they can be anonymous. So we are, but we are tracking some pieces of data on the calls. Um, we'll ask someone their zip code. So again, as Lori mentioned, we can find resources that are close to them, um, but we're also tracking those needs. So the, the taxonomy terms that are the services are indexed also serve as um, kind of a barometer of the community's needs. Um, so just to give you an idea of kind of the volume of contacts that 211 has across the state, um, here's some 2021 and 2022 um, contact volume. So um, we did see a, a decrease um, between 2021 and 2022. Um, the majority of that decrease um, was in New York City. Um, in New York City, the calls are answered by the 311. So it's a combined 211, 311 contact center there in New York. Um, for the balance of the state, though, you'll see that some areas there was um, pretty consistent and some areas did experience some drop off. Um, during the, the COVID pandemic, which yes, is still going on, um, 211 actually saw a, an incredible increase in contact volume. Um, part of that was, as I mentioned, people who had never had to seek services before were suddenly unemployed and suffering from kind of the economic consequences of the pandemic. Um, other reasons were um, folks, a lot of the pandemic resources were only accessible online. And some community members, as we know, don't have access to the internet or don't have the technological capacity to access the internet. Um, so if you think about early 2021, when vaccines first came out, um, it was primarily for folks who were um, seniors, and you had to register for that vaccine appointment online. Um, so there's kind of a mismatch there <laughs> between the population being served and the technology or the, the modality available to connect them to those services. So in many communities, 211 played a role where they were taking calls from folks in the community and actually um, scheduling them for those appointments at their local Department of Health or at the vaccine clinics. So they were on the phone with the seniors, filling out all of that information that um, we all answered about, you know, whether or not this 80 year old person <laughs> is pregnant or, you know, has had cancer recently or things like that. So 211's um, really stepped into a role of being kind of a middle, a broker of these services for folks during the pandemic. Um, a lot of 211 supported communities um, in registering people for um, COVID food box distribution. Um, so they were able to work with community agencies to get the schedules of these distributions, register folks for specific time periods, and also communicate to them kind of the, the rules of how to pick up the box, you know, put a sticker on your window with your household size and the number by broken down by age, make sure your trunk is cleared and open so that the individual can put the box in and, you know, drive through with your window up and a smile on your face. Um, but part of the benefit of these community organizations working with 211 for some of these registration um, procedures was that 211 also had an opportunity to talk to community members who for some hadn't talked to to folks for quite a while um, because they've been isolating at home. But others, you know, were struggling with the pandemic, um, circumstances of the pandemic. So 211 community resource specialists were able to screen them for other needs. So yes, maybe they called for that food box registration or they called for their COVID vaccine, but the community resource specialists at 211 are really trained to ask kind of probing questions and make sure that, you know, there aren't other unmet needs that the community member is having. So those are some of the, the things that 211 did during the pandemic. 
Um, one of the other things on this slide that I'll point out is that there's different um, modalities that 211 um, answers contacts or calls for. So still the overwhelming majority is, is people calling 211, so making that three digit phone number call, but we also accept text. So you can text 211 by texting your zip code to 898211. And that initiates a two-way conversation between the 211 community resource specialist and the community member, all by text. Folks also email 211. Some of the 211s have chat. Not all of the 211s have a chat on their website. Um, all of the 211s in New York do have text. And then also there's in-person interactions, whether it's um, a coworker or at a library or if you're out at a community fair and someone comes up to the table and you know they're interested in 211 and then they start telling you, you know, about the situation they're dealing with in their life and you can pull up the 211 specialist will pull up their database and make some referrals in person to that person. So you can see there's a lot of different ways that folks are contacting 211 to get assistance. So what are they calling about? So Unfortunately, the overwhelming needs that 211 sees are folks who are struggling to meet basic needs. So housing and food and utility assistance are kind of chronically some of the top needs that we hear from community members. Um, so we're connecting them to those agencies that provide supports with basic needs. Um, during the early, uh, late winter and early spring, we get a lot of calls for free tax preparation assistance. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you'll see this is um, a breakdown or a dashboard of 211 contacts um, during a 12-month period. And um, we get a lot of contacts for tax preparation services. So, and I'll speak about that more later. But you can also see um, we can break down the data by zip code so we can kind of see where um, things are happening or if there's um, emerging needs in specific communities. Uh, we can look at year over year comparisons. Um, and we can also see as a state, you know, where are we hearing from folks more? Um, and again, some of this is um, dependent on how well the community is aware of 211. So 211 can only reflect the community needs as much as the community knows to reach out to 211 for those needs. Um, but also it can act as a barometer for what's going on in a specific community. And here's kind of another breakdown of some of the different types of needs that 211 has uh, served in the community. So you'll see again, food and meals is very large, um, legal assistance and public safety. Um, some of this again is the New York City 311, 211 calls blended in, um, but food, especially during the pandemic, was an incredibly large need and will be the topic of our next uh, webinar. So we, we talked a little bit about the 211 Contact Center. Um, so just to review, um, dialing 211 uh, will connect you to a caring, empathetic, trained, certified community resource specialist. Um, the staff who answer the 211 calls have been certified by AIRS, the accrediting body for information and referral systems. Uh, and they um, you know, have to undergo continuing education each year to maintain that, that certification as well. Uh, community resource specialists are trained in active listening, um, trained to ask probing questions, and to provide service navigation. So um, people can feel comfortable calling 211 because they're going to talk to someone who's non judgmental, who's, you know, doesn't know their background. They know as much as the person's going to share with them. So it's, you know, it can be more comfortable than talking to your mom or your sister who might, you know, be judging you sometimes or <laughs> know some of the other choices that led you to the situation you're in. The 211 community resource specialist is not going to know that, and they can help you focus on the problem at hand and come up with a plan to address it. And again, 211 is available 24 7 across New York State 
and most of the country. So as I mentioned earlier, um, two on ones across the state and across the country do a lot of support for the free tax preparation services that are available in communities. Um, so they provide information and referral to VITA, the volunteer income tax assistance programs that are the IRS um, supported programs, FSA, which is um, facilitated self-assistance, which some of you may have hosted in your own libraries where um, patrons can access a computer to do their taxes themselves online using a free file service such as My Free Taxes, which is the one that's sponsored by the United Way. They also uh, connect folks to the AARP um, TCE or tax counseling for the elderly sites. Um, as I mentioned, the free file online and can connect folks to the IRS and New York State Department of Taxation when a community member needs to actually contact the department or the IRS taxpayer advocate or just needs to figure out where their refund is and why it hasn't shown up in their bank account yet. Additionally, some 211s um, actually schedule appointments for the VITA um, agencies, and some of uh, we work with some libraries to do that, the Kenmore Library and Riverside Library, and many libraries in Chautauqua County. Um, <laughs> Pendergast Library is a very uh, high utilizer of 211 <laughs> scheduling services for VITA sites. Um, and some of the benefits of working with a 211. For that is that 211 can send out reminders to the patrons about their tax appointments, either by text or email. Um, so we can push notifications. Um, we can let folks know what documents they need to bring with them as part of their eligibility and screening when they call. And we can also um, push that out to them in a text or email in the reminder. And then because this is, you know, New York State and the weather is always changing. Um, we can work with the site to reschedule appointments if there has, if the site has to close because of a snowstorm or a blizzard or a few years ago during a pandemic when we had to shut down. So when to search versus when to call. Lori, do you want to talk a little bit about this? Sure. Um... There are, you know, sometimes a patron will come in and they'll have a need and it will be, you know, a very, you know, simple request. And in that instance, I would encourage you to go ahead and, and search through the database and, and try and see what you can find. Our goal is always um, to, to sort of mirror what the call center does, which is give three referrals to a person um, so that they have options. And um, usually that is possible. There are some uh, resources where, or needs where there aren't as many resources available, um, but um, we try to do that every time. And, um, but if you, if you, you know, start to search and you, you aren't coming up with satisfactory results, or you feel that um, perhaps there's a situation that is a little more complicated than what's being presented initially to you, I would encourage you to um, you know, let the person know that the call center is available, that there are people who can help with many different needs, um, you know, or refer uh, options for, for many different needs, and that um, you know, they, they have that available to them. Um, and sometimes I know that you know, in, in some instances, I've actually made a call myself to 211 to see, you know, what I can get for them to give them sort of like a warm transfer to 211, um, you know, by getting getting the resource myself, letting them know, um, perhaps allowing them to to, you know, have a, a question and answer with the person on the other end of the phone if they're comfortable doing that, or to you know try and get what I can, give that to them and let them know that that resource is available to them when they leave. So um, it, it is, there, you know, there is a point where you can just say, well, I, I, I am not getting the results that I wanna get. So 
just know that that call center is there and is available if you if you need that assistance when you're trying to find something. Um, and always let the patron leave with that information for 211 because you know they may have they may come in and they're looking for a food pantry, but they do have other needs that they're just not thinking about right now because right now they're thinking about they need to get the, to the food pantry. Um, but if they have that 211 resource, when they leave, they still have that you know support in their in their pocket for for the the next need down the road. So you know we always you know try and give people what we can, but we always give them that that number as well and and let them know that there is a caring person on the other end of the line who can help them. So now might be a good time to demonstrate one of the 211 resource database websites. Um, Lori, did you wanna do a spin through 211 Long Island? I, I'd be happy to do that, sure. So I'm just gonna um, share my screen. You need screen. to stop sharing, okay. okay. <laughs> Yeah, so here's here's the um, the two one one Long Island uh, database, and um, basically uh, this is our our landing page, and we have all of our uh, information about the database here. Um, we have the the numbers for uh, the call center, as well as an email if people want to contact us through email. Um, and then we have some quick searches here just for support that we use. Um, you know, we have the VITA information, transportation, um, and if there are weather emergencies, we're able to put something on this page for that. And um, the COVID-19 is basically uh, shut down, but we're just keeping it there for the time being in case anything else does come out. Um, so that's pretty much um, the, our, our landing page. But we also have our inclusion exclusion here. Um, and that is important. All 211s um, have to have the inclusion exclusion. How, you know, what are the criteria that must be met for a resource to be included in the database? And what will exclude a service? Um, and, you know, so fundamentally, they all require the same information, um, but each one. Uh, does design their own inclusion exclusion. So this is ours. And, you know, basically we're looking for, for um, not-for-profits um, that are providing services. If no not-for-profits meet that need, then we will consider a for-profit organization. And we do look for organizations that have been, you know, around for a little while. So they have established some credibility and that we know that there's a track record where they are able to provide those services without um, difficulty. And then we also have um, our add update a resource here. Um, so, you know, agencies that are in the database can come here to either add, you know, if they're not in the database, they can add their agency, they can add services or add an add a site um, to either a new or existing uh, agency. So that's, that's really what that's all about. And then this is also the portal that gets people to our, our search. And this is where the database begins. And we have these quick searches that are available for people to, um, it's like a guided search. And um, you can you know, click on any of these uh, subjects and there are questions that are here um, to, to assist with um, you know, uh, different needs. So, Housing is, as Kelly said, our, our biggest need right now. And a lot of it has to do with eviction. So we do have you know, guided searches here. And this is what a, a result list will look like. So you have a map of where the services are, but then you also get this list, which also has a, just a window of, of some of the, the, um, the record. And then you can also sort by your zip code. So if you go in and you sort, 
got to move this a little bit. And you'll search here. And this will put it into um, zip code order. So I'm just going to go into one of these. Um, you know, this is a quick pane view. So you do get the phone number and the hours and the eligibility and a brief description. So you may not, you know, have to go in all the way, but just so you know what's in a record and what it looks like. Um, you know, this is the longer description. These are the taxonomy terms that are associated. And then you have the different locations where this service is provided. The phone number for the different offices. So if you're closer to Riverhead, you'll call this number, the hours and the website, what the eligibility is, their application project process, and if they speak any other languages. Um, all of that information is in the basic record. So um, that's what a record will look like. And, oh goodness. I just wanna get back to my... <laughs> okay, there you go. Okay, so um, yes, did you have a question? Oh. I was going to mention, Lori, you mentioned um, which languages would be available, and that reminded me that I forgot to mention that 211, um, when you call 211, um, 211 has multilingual staff, but also uses um, over the phone translation services. So um, we can talk to folks in over 170 different languages using an interpreter over the phone. So back to <laughs> Azure. So the, that's one way to search is using these um, drop down menus. So you you um, can can do these uh, quick you know guided searches here. But if you want to do a targeted search, or if you kind of have a sense of you know what you're looking for, you can come in here. Um, there is a way to do a keyword search. So if you're looking for food pantries, you can just type in food pantries and you'll get a whole list of food pantries. And so then you can search by your, your zip. And my screen is so tiny. <laughs> I keep having to move everything around so I can get to where I need to go. So, um, and so if you, you know, you'll see that you have the hours for the food pantry. It tells you if it's, um, what the eligibility requirements are. You could print this short list for someone and they would have you know, different places that they could go to at different times in different days. And most of them are open. Now this one is open only to community members living within the parish boundaries. So you would see that and you might wanna pass that by, but if the person lives right here, then they would be eligible. So you could you could print out this whole little list and they would have you know options for different times and different days, which is very helpful. And then um, okay. Oh there, that's what I want to do. So then we'll come back here and rather than do a keyword search, we can also do a taxonomy search. And that's that subject heading, like I was saying. So we're gonna do food pantries again and see what comes up for food pantries. So now you'll see that, you know, here comes those codes that we were talking about. And we see um, some, some food pantries, but also the group that perhaps is, is being targeted for specific food, food pantries. Um, and there's also mobile food pantry programs. So um, you can go in and you can, you can just click on this one. Why isn't it coming? Okay. All right, so, and then you can search once you have your, your targeted, uh, taxonomy term. 
Oh, I didn't do that right. Okay. Oh, that's so weird. It's not giving me the results it gave me the last time. Okay. Um, but you can you can sense that um, what you get a bunch of different choices that you can have. Or you can just go to the the term itself. I don't know why. Oh, there must be something else in my search that's messing me up. Because I know I have food pantries in my. <laughs> that's very strange. Okay. No, I, I don't know what was happening there. But so this is this is how you would get it with the the um, taxonomy terms. But it you know it, it all comes out looking the same, um, and then you can limit by your zip code. So um, I just want to make sure I covered. Um, You know, generally speaking, what will happen sometimes is we will, um, you know, we'll get uh, emails through the site that we then have to provide uh, assistance. And that's usually our point of access as the database provider is we'll get emails to us. And then we will um, get three references to provide to the person as well as letting them know that they can contact the call center. Um, and the, the needs, you know, generally have been for housing, um, mental health needs, and domestic violence is one that um, we do get a lot um, through the, the texting. I had helped someone just recently who she didn't want to use the phone. That was, that was a point of concern for her that um, on the phone, would would make would be dangerous for her so she wanted everything through an email and um so sometimes that's that's uh, you know how why people will contact us is because they you know they feel that it's safer um but is there is there anything else you wanted me to cover kelly I just would say, you know, that that if you if you are, you know, trying to help a patron, really the best course of action is to have them call the call center because those call center specialists have specialized information and they will be able to to do, you know, a targeted search that will help your your patron the most. Yeah, thank you, Lori. I think that's that's great advice. If it's you know something you have a high degree of confidence navigating to, like a food pantry or um, or the domestic violence hotline, or if it's something where they have a whole bunch of needs, and you know you can tell just by having that initial conversation that this is going to be you know a good thirty minutes of your time, and you don't have that thirty minutes to give them, you know maybe find them a quiet space and have them call two one one right from the the um, in a private space in the library even. Um, and I thought I could also um, show a couple of the Western or other upstate New York websites too briefly. Um, let's see, I can. Oh, I have to stop sharing. Uh, I won't be able to take it over. Let's see, share screen. Okay. And share. All right, did that work? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, so this is the 211 Western New York um, website. Um, this is their landing page. 
Um, they have some, um, some kind of uh, changing information on their homepage. Um, so there's a scroller here that goes through some topic specific information. Um, and then there's also resources um, for the blizzard disaster loan information and cold weather resources here. Um, this is where the keyword searches that Lori demonstrated, um, similar in Long Island, and also some guided searches. Um, so if we wanted to look at um, some tax services in Western New York, we could click here and see it's going to give us a bunch of tax services. We can filter this down by county. Um, but I'd also bring your attention over to these um, links on the, on the left here. Browse by category is um, searching the taxonomy. So like Lori just demonstrated, um, and then with the narrow down, we're searching by the, the subject heading. Um, submit a service is a link to a form where a community provider, really anyone, can um, submit a resource that they believe is either new or not existing in the 211 database. So for example, if you, um, you know, start running a, um, a little pantry out of your library, um, that's a resource that we see has popped up a lot in the last few years in a lot of places. So it's one of those um, kind of food pantries that's just freestanding and um, they're available all over the community. That's something that maybe you would want to submit um, this service to. And then you can also see here, um, there's some drill downs into this particular category. Um, so if we wanted to see the taxpayer advocate service only, you can see there's a lot of services listed here, but we just want the taxpayer advocate service. We can drill down into that. And you'll see there's really, well, there's the taxpayer advocate service and then Volunteer Lawyers Project, which has a special um, low-income taxpayer clinic um, for folks there. So the mapping on 211 Western New York site is a little different. It's just specific to the particular resource, not to the service category. Um, but you'll see this similar to what we just looked at, um, common fields, the name, the website, um, description of the phone numbers, um, the primary service, so that's the taxonomy term, and then a description, hours, eligibility, intake process, et cetera, and then the date of a last, uh, last update to give you kind of a degree of confidence in how current the resource is. So if you see something that's been updated in the 12 months, you have a high degree of confidence. If it hasn't been updated in the last 12 months, maybe encourage the patron to call ahead to confirm that the hours are still, you know, what they were a few years ago. Let's see if I can switch to um, the Zoom controls in the way. So this is the um, 211 New York site. Um, as I mentioned in the chat, it is well overdue for a refresh. <laughs> so <laughs> please excuse its current state. Um, but if you are looking for the, a 211 resource database in New York State, um, you want to click on this Find Services and then go to the county for the resource database that you're looking for. So um, let's see. One of the other ones I wanted to demonstrate was um, the Southern Tier. Let's see if that works. Okay, so this is um, the Institute for Human Services operates this 211 out of Bath, New York, and they have um, their resource database here. So you can click search. And this is actually a new um, search engine that we're looking at bringing to 211 New York. So it'll aggregate the 211 resource databases across the state and create a, a common, common landing page to search the entire statewide website. So that should be happening in the next quarter. Fingers crossed <laughs> that that will happen. Um, but similar to what we just saw, um, this one has some kind of natural language search suggestions. Um, so if we you know, needed help with that domestic violence service, put that in here and um, I put that. 
New York, since that's where this database is um, registered, and hit search. And it'll show us the resources that are available. So over here on the left, you'll see this was the search term, the radius, the address. You could put a zip code in there. Those are the search, the taxonomies or the service headings. And then these are the resources that came up there. There's also some filters, which don't look to be set up yet. <laughs> um, there. And uh, again, if you click here, it'll open that full description of the program. Maybe it's more information. There we go. So in there is application process, contact for details, contact for fees, and then a description of the services. Let's see. Oh, we're getting short on time. So, so those are some of the <laughs> two on one resource databases. Let me see if I can stop sharing and switch back to our PowerPoint. Do -do. Um, so how can libraries support 211? So 211 is a best kept secret, unfortunately, in most communities. <laughs> Very few people know about it, but those who know about it call us again and again. Um, when we look at, you know, how people heard to call us or how did you know to call 211 for this, which is something that we ask most of our callers, um, usually they've called us before or it's word of mouth. So um, people are sharing it um, when it comes up. But again, a lot of people don't know. So um, some things that we would like to suggest that you can do to help get the word out is to link to your local 211 website on your library homepage or on your list of resource databases. Um, you know, we really feel that this is a, a validated resource database that is worthy of being included on maybe a, a library resource guide. Um, and it's free. To it's free. And it's free. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to pay a subscription for that. <laughs> um, use 211 when patrons are looking for social service needs. We all know how easy it is to Google, but um, Google is not always the best results, um, you know, and uh, 211s are professionally curated uh, resource databases, and those are going to give you the most comprehensive results for a particular community for a need. Um, and again, share 211 with your networks. Um, call up the 211 in your community and say, hey, can you give a presentation for my senior group that meets here or the, the book club that meets here or the moms? Um, you know, that's one of the, I think Lori shared that that's kind of part of how um, 211 and their resource guide got started in Long Island was through a parent support group. And then, uh, Thank you for attending today. We have some, we're really grateful to um, the Library Resource Council for connecting with us and offering to connect us to, offering to connect us with you guys. Um, we have some upcoming webinars scheduled on some specific topic areas. Um, so we're gonna do one next month on May 11th on food and food, food access. Um, and then in the fall, we're going to do one on housing and homelessness and one on reentry services. And with any luck, our new um, websites will be up by then <laughs> and we'll be able to demonstrate those as well. Um, but I guess I wanted to leave a few minutes for questions. So I see there's some stuff in the chat. Yeah, I noticed there were a couple questions that you already answered in the chat. Um, okay. We have a question about 511. I linked to the 511 website. It's actually a really great resource. Um, I also linked to the registration for the next webinar, which Kelly mentioned is on May 11th about food security. And I'm bringing links to the evaluation form. Does anyone have any question, additional questions for Kelly or Lori?
Well, thanks for all the great questions today and your attention and wanting Thank to learn more much. about 211. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lori and Kelly, and thank you everyone who attended today. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope to see you all May 11th for the next session. And after that, we will have two more sessions in the fall. More information will be coming soon. All right, thank have a good all. Thank you.